uh, I will start then. Thank you guys so much for coming to my presentation. My name is Winnie and I am a second year graduate student at Lehigh University. I am pursuing a dual certification in elementary and special education. For those who stayed on the link and attended the presentation before me, uh, they talked about art, but like in a more theoretical way, whereas my presentation will be more about how I used art through my intercultural journey. So are you guys ready? I am going to tell you my story. It's a story of how art influenced my journey. This is middle school Winnie. As the internet was just reaching most families' homes, middle school Winnie spent a lot of times browsing online and she came across this art genre called webcomics. She fell in love immediately and became a huge fan of Lin Shi Liu, Sarah Anderson, and Yi Chen Ding. This is high school Winnie. In her high school years, she had to move from China to the US and then from US to Singapore. Those transitions were not easy. She struggled with language, culture, and academics. But she made sure that when days were hard, at least there were some art supplies with her. She sketched things around her, painted her dreams, and drew cartoon characters to keep her company. By the time high school Winnie graduated, she had lived in China, Japan, the US, and Singapore, and had studied abroad in the UAE and the UK. This is undergrad Winnie. Undergrad Winnie was a double major in art and architecture at Lehigh. It was time for her to select a topic for her capstone project. She went to her advisor's office, showed her Sarah Anderson's comic book and said, I want to use art to share my third culture journey. And off she went. That was my journey. When looking at international students, immigrant students, and bilingual students, it's easy to lump them together and assume that they share the same experiences. It's easy to develop deficit thinking and blame the student's lack of ability on their cultural background. Fortunately, I was given the opportunity to use my artistic talent to express my stories. This is not the case for many other students. Today, I'm going to share with you stories of how I used art as a student and as an educator to confront deficit thinking, validate identity, and promote inclusion. Before I go any further, let's clarify the definition of a third culture kid. I identify myself as a third culture kid, but have you ever heard of the term? What do you think it means? What does it mean to you? So you guys can scan the QR code on the top left and answer the question, or you guys can go to slido.com and enter the code, which is 26100. And your responses should be uh, live on the screen once you type it. Oh, I see some responses. Belonging to more than one culture, thereby creating that as its own culture. Someone who moves around a lot. Coming from more than two cultures growing up. I'll give you guys um, 30 more seconds for any other responses to come in. These are all like really great answers having parents of multiple cultures, a person who was born in one culture but raised in others. Wow, you guys have a lot of like knowledge about their culture already, mixing two cultures. 
I, I actually met a lot of people who had no idea what their culture mean, even though they were their culture kids themselves. All right, thank you guys so much. Let's move on to the next slide where I um, clarify the definition. There, oops, there. Their culture kids are people raised in the culture other than their parents or the culture of the country named on their passport. When asked, where are you from? I often answer and uh, I often offer an answer that is way too long for a small talk. Uh, my family was originally from China. I lived in Japan for a bit when I was young. And then in my teenage years, I lived in the US and then Singapore and I came back to the US for college. But of course, there's always the short answer. There's often a lot of misinformation about the definition of a third culture kid. But regardless of your definition of it, the, imp the important thing is to recognize the complexity and diversity of students, especially international students. They are beyond their language deficit. Being a third culture kid was and still is an eye-opening experience. By uprooting myself, I was able to absorb the nutrients of different soils. And coming to Lehigh as a permanent resident of the United States, a citizen of China and a former resident of Japan and Singapore, I found myself at many crossroads at once. One thing I discovered was that art was a linguistic bridge. When I first arrived at Lehigh in 2015, I immediately noticed some stereotypes that were present in the community especially those seemingly harmless ones that many domestic students used as jokes. Even though I had lived in the US before, I was relatively unfamiliar with the concept of implicit bias. Thankfully, I was able to work with Teresa, who is also on the call. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> she was my English instructor at the time, and she encouraged me to look into American artistic mediums that portrayed social issues such as racism and ethnocentrism to gain a better understanding of what I was facing as a student. We turned it into a research project and received the College of Arts and Sciences research grant. I recruited several other international students to work with me on the project. We came from Thailand, China, which was me, South Korea, Spain, and Kenya. Together, we produced a video called Our Story. We use digital art to educate the community and strengthen our understanding of cultures. This is the, like the intro of our video. The humorous, friendly, non-judgmental tone of the video quickly gained popularity on campus. The video was featured on Lehigh's social media to highlight diversity on campus. It was also used on, uh, it was also, went, it also went out to international students during the orientation. In the video, my international friends and I discussed the stereotypes we faced. We drew those stereotypes on poster boards and we tore them down with stories of our journeys. We talked about, so this is uh, my Kenyan friend. He was talking about how people at Lehigh thought Africa, he was from Africa and Africa was a country. So he explained in the video that in fact, Africa is a continent with many countries. So in the video, we talked about where we came from, what people thought we were, who we actually were. And we talked about some things that surprised us about the American college experience. And here's a clip of what surprised, about, what surprised us about Lehigh. It wasn't that much a shock when I came to Lehigh for college, since I went to a public school in New Jersey and an American school in Singapore. However, I still did not expect that the residential buildings here were co-ed. In our country, orientation was means almost nothing and spent one or two days and do nothing. Like, but in our school, it spent the entire week to, for the students to prepare for the semester. People here value football so much. When I was back in Thailand, of course, we don't have American football, but we don't really value sports as much in general. 
uh, especially in college. Oh, just to clarify, the very last clip when the student was talking about football, that video clip was taken during the Lehigh Lafayette Rivalry Week, where the marching band will literally crash into your class and play the fight song to prepare to pep everybody up for the rivalry football game on that Saturday. <laughs> So that was the first time I experienced the power of art and media. They address important issues in a casual way. Those poster board doodles and chats about our home countries validated our identity and empowered other international students. I quickly became an active member of the international community at Lehigh. I recognized the lack of collective artistic expressions among international students and the gap among three groups on campus, international students, Greek life students, and athletes. Teresa and other ICAPE instructors, including Elena, uh, Kayla, and Mary, who just presented in the, uh, in the last presentation, they reached out to me and other students and proposed the idea of creating an intercultural literary journal. So I became the first president of International Voices, and we published the first issue of the journal in the spring of 2017. We collected submissions of all genres of art, including paintings, drawings, photos, poems, and narratives. We encouraged students of all backgrounds to submit their work and tell their stories. Over the years, International Voices has published traditional Chinese ink paintings, poems in Spanish and English, stories about identity, etc. And as a student organization, International Voices collaborated with other student clubs on campus, such as Asian Culture Society, Global Union, and Lehigh After Dark. And we held events like Valentine's Day Mug Painting Night, Our Voice, Our World International Poetry Night, Watercolor Painting Night, and many more. Through events and submissions, Many people, many students came out of their shell and started interacting with students who belong to other groups. Art brought them together and increased their awareness of each other. In 2018, International Voices won the Club of the Year Award for bridging the gap among different groups on campus. In my junior and senior years of Lehigh, Cox Hall, home of the Office of Inter International Affairs was getting renovated. I proposed to design a branding wall for the, for the second floor hallway. After a year of meetings and re revisions, my mural became part of the Lehigh landscape. One side of the mural featured the international landmarks and the other side, American ones. I hope you guys can identify some landmarks and um, they represent the motto of Global Union, which is bringing the world to Lehigh. After the completion of the mural, I sometimes came across students in that hallway who were immersed in conversations about landmarks and traditions in their countries. They pointed at the buildings they painted and spoke in a hybrid of English and their native tongue. My strokes of paintbrush became the topic of their reminiscence. Much of my language journey was rooted in art, and it, and it did not stop with my graduation from Lehigh. I stayed at Lehigh for my master's degree, and I am currently pursuing a dual certification in elementary and special education. And teaching was actually my very first dream. I wanted to be a teacher since I was very young because I had a really cool elementary uh, English teacher. So I did a comic for her on September 10th, which is the Chinese Teacher's Day. So this, this comic on the slide basically portrayed why I, why I pursued education. And I wanted to thank her for um, inspiring, me, inspiring me to go on this path. Lehigh's education classes have taught me the importance of recognizing learning preferences. When designing lessons, there is no one size fits all. All the lesson plans that we design follow the principles of universal design for learning, which provide multiple means of engagement, representation, and action and expression. For each segment of the Lehigh lesson plan, 
we've designed accommodations and modifications for students with special needs as well as English learners. This is the Lehigh part of the Lehigh lesson plan, and we use that to design all our all our lessons. And art is a great way to accommodate students with special needs and English learners because it gives them a platform for expression. Visual aids are already commonly used in classrooms to assist students with letter recognition, vocabulary building, and concept development. Research has shown that visual aids help English learners grasp concepts quickly, which consequently boosts their confidence and make them active speakers, listeners, and writers. By letting students make the visual aids themselves, students take ownership of their learning which results in more enjoyment and higher retention rate. In my pre-K classroom, my students learn to express their emotions and interests through drawings. Art allows them to communicate in different mode other than language and vocab vocabulary. Such communication actually helps reduce challenging behavior in class, and I had such a smooth summer semester with them. Art is also used in higher education. In higher ed, storyboards have become an effective tool for pitching ideas. This is a storyboard I used uh, that I made for a friend's entrepreneurship project. It was to highlight the needs for headphone innovation. My friend used the storyboard and presented her project on assistive, assistive technology at the Baker Institute's Eureka Pitch Night, a monthly student entrepreneurship competition to support projects with potential to make a positive impact. Not sure how much my storyboard helped, but I can tell you that she won funding and coaching for that night. During the pandemic, it seems almost impossible to implement any of the principles of universal design for learning. However, there are online platforms that we can use to keep the artistic intercultural dialogue going. Scriblio is an online multiplayer Pictionary game that I would highly recommend all the ESL teachers to try out. How it works is that the host creates a set of words they want to use in the game. And then each player takes turns to guess, the, to, draw the, to draw the word based on their interpretation when others guess the word in the chat box. Players earn points from making correct guesses within a certain time limit. This game challenges students' understanding of the words and the ability to visually communicate abstract ideas. It's called Scriblio. It literally just types Scriblio in the, um, in the browser. And I have a clip of me and my friend playing Scriblio. You're choosing a word. That is hard. <laughs> I mean, you know what it is, so... My god, what is it? Oh, oh, oh! Yeah! Easier for you. Okay. I don't know, I'm not gonna guess it, I know it's hard. It's really hard. Oh, okay, I know, I think. Yes! So uh, the words that I chose for that game were all Lehigh specific words. So the first word that, um, that was provided to him was Goodman, which is the Goodman campus, our athletic campus. So uh, I, I got the whole like football field that he drew. And the bed race was part of the Lehigh Lafayette Rivalry Week activity where students would <laughs> sign up to uh, be like, they would group up as teams and two people, two, two to four people would sit on a bed and other people would push the bed across the campus and they would have races of the, of the beds. It was really fun. Yeah, that actually goes back to how the student, actually the student that I um, played Scriblio with, he was the one in the previous clip that explained how football is such a big deal in America and he does not understand that. So I have said a lot about art, from how it helped me explore my multicultural identity, how I used it to foster cultural appreciation and inclusion, and how it can be beneficial in an educational setting. I would like to encourage you all to think creatively and artistically in your education journey. 
art promotes a growth mindset. It is a low risk way for students to experiment with the language. As we all say, a picture says a thousand words. The multimodality of art helps students express themselves more effectively. It gives students multiple options in expressing and constructing meaning. Today, I am still making comics every week. In my comic book, Third Culture is on sale on Etsy. I hope that I get to keep creating art, sharing my stories, learning from others, and making a difference. Thank you all.